I want you guys to know it's my pleasure to be here today back on UTA's campus. I'm a 1980 graduate of the School of Business. I think I was in the very first class that a uh, group of students that attended, that even stepped foot in this building, okay? Um, I love coming back to UTA. I had a 20 year absence of not being associated with the school, but with College Park and everything, uh, I've just, I mean, overjoyed, you know, to espouse UTA's greatness. What kids in here have ever, have you ever walked across the campus and said, golly, I like a, bi a building name after me. Who's, who's, who's thought that? I think everybody's, everybody's lying. Because we all want, you know, to, to have a building or a part of this university that we love and has given us so much, um, have something named after us. You know, um, when I was approached by the school to have something, um, opportunity, I turned it down, okay? But what I chose to do, the associate coach's office in the College Park is named after my father, who founded our company. I want to read you something. The tragedy in life does not lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die without dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity to have no dreams. It's not a disaster to be unable to capture your ideal, but it is a disaster to have no ideal to capture. It's not a disgrace not to reach for the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. I often tell people when I got in corporate America, I was with the largest, most profitable company in the world, uh, international business machines, IBM. And when I came to work for IBM, um, my contemporaries were guys from these great schools, okay? SMU, grad school, Texas, Michigan, Florida, Rutgers. And I wondered if I could compete, you know, because I'm from this little school, UTA, that was a, a commuter school at the time. And I always tell UT UTA students when I talk to them or meet them or whatever, um, not only did I compete, I surpassed those guys. So I always want you guys to know you're getting a superior education. My company, Kemp and Sons General Services Inc., is a 41-year-old 40, family-owned business. Started out as a mom and pop uh, uh, company, part-time venture. My father started to send me and my three, uh, two brothers to college. Most recently, uh, we were recognized by Harvard Business School as the 10th fastest inner city growing company in America uh, out of over 2,100 companies, okay? The company was started with $10, okay? Uh, today, we have 150 plus employees and have nearly $17 million of contracts in place, okay? And I'll, I attribute that to, a lot of that to UTA, okay? I still remember some of my instructors. Uh, so one, fun, one funny thing I always uh, uh, think about is uh, I made a D in analytical geometry. And I was so afraid to come to a prospective, uh, prospective employee with a D on my transcript. So I took analytical geometry again with a tutor. I made another D, okay. I could not have this D on my transcript. So I got a better tutor, I thought, and took it a third time. You know what I made? Another D. <laughs> so I had to settle with the fact that I was gonna have a D on my transcript in analytical geometry, okay. Confucius once said, the man that says he can't and the man that says he can are both usually right, okay? Mark Twain said, all horses run, all horses race, but only few win. To me, to be successful, you have to know you can win, okay? When I went to IBM, I didn't know I could win, okay? I didn't know. But what, to be really successful in today's market, what you really have to do to be successful, you know, you say you gotta look out in the future, you gotta look down the road. That's not quite true. You have to look down the road and around the corner, okay? Down the road and around the corner. And the biggest thing in today's marketplace is excellence. I don't do average. I hate the word good, because good is a fake. If you don't wanna, if you don't wanna be great, you're missing something. Steve Jobs said, you should live your life as if this was the last day you have on earth. What are you not doing? What are you not trying to achieve, okay? You know, the average person, I don't know, the people out here in the audience with three nines and three eights, okay? Just, just think about this for a second. You only, we only reach 10% of our true potential. Is that scary? Sometimes I sit back in my office, I close the door, I put my feet up on the desk and I start thinking, I said, wow, 10% of my potential. 
if I'm only reaching 10% of my potential, what if I was reaching 40%? How many employees would I have? How much would my company be growing, okay? I'm the slowest person to change, okay, in our company. I have to admit that. I'm the slowest person, okay? But another thing I tell people in today's marketplace, you got to be different. You got to do, you, average, who wants average? Who, raise, raise your hand up if you want average. Nobody's raising Today in this marketplace, people want excellence. That's what separates everybody, excellence. Give you, uh, I love sports. I came to UTA on a basketball scholarship. Uh, you know the difference between, I like Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki and Michael Jordan. You know the difference? Okay, I'll tell you the difference. Dirk is going to score 40. His man is going to score 39. Okay? Michael Jordan is going to score 40. His man is going to score 12. That's the difference. Greatness. Jay-Z says, I don't want to be one of, I want to be the one. Okay? This is a guy who was born in the projects. This is a guy who was a drug dealer as a kid. This is a guy whose father left him. This is a guy, you know what he said, the turning point in his life? The turning point of this multi, multi-millionaire, sports agent, uh, music mogul, producer, author. The turning point in his life when he took a field trip to his sixth grade teacher's house and he saw an ice machine on the refrigerator. Is that wild? That was a turning, you know what? Because he saw more. And he realized there was more in the world to have, okay? I sit back sometimes and say, why can't I have that? I have all the trappings of success, you know? I mean, I have the crazy kind of cars, pay too much for, you know? Make you wanna cry when you get a, a repair bill, okay? Uh, I travel, uh, you know, my wife goes to Europe quite a bit. I haven't been yet, okay? Okay, but know this, you can be as talented as can be. I don't want the talented person. I want the skilled individual because your talent's gonna wear out. Your talent can only take you so far. I'd rather have the guy that comes to practice early and stays late opposed to the guy that's the super talent because the super talent is not gonna work that hard, okay? I tell people, I'm not that smart, <laughs> okay? I'm not that smart. I got recognized at Harvard, but I'm not that smart, okay? I don't have one creative chromosome in my body. <laughs> None. But I have this, this great thing I can do that a lot of people won't do is I work, okay? I don't even have an alarm clock in my house. My passion works me up, wakes me up every morning, five something. Every, I don't even have a, I probably don't even know how to work the alarm on my phone. I don't need an alarm clock because I'm waking up in the morning to go get it. One thing successful people do, they never quit learning. Uh, this year I've been to uh, one class taught by some Harvard professors in Detroit. I'm leaving next week to go to New York to be taught by some more Ivy League professors on tell, uh, to tell me how to grow my business. Okay. Uh, last year I was in Chicago at a class taught by this young uh, entrepreneur, venture capitalist, at 37 years old, he had bought and sold seven, eight companies, multi, multi-millionaire. He was teaching at various uh, Ivy League schools. And in this, in this group I was working with, the young man came to me, 37 years old, comes to me and says, Mr. Kim, how many times do you want to grow your company? And I say, 10 times. I thought it was reasonable, achievable, even reaching a little bit. And this man told me something. He said, if you don't want to grow it 50 times, you're wasting my time. I was kind of overwhelmed. I said, how do you grow a business 50 times? Easy. I tell people all the time, it's as easy to make a million dollars as it's not. To make a million dollars is really easy. But it's really hard. <laughs> okay? But you got to make up your mind. Okay? Your two, your two greatest assets in life it's not if you can sing or jump high, throw a football, shoot a basketball, or, or decipher an algorithm. It's going to be your work ethic and your attitude. Successful people learn for a lifetime. You had, you had, you're not, hadn't even started. You hadn't even broke the tip of the iceberg with learning. Okay? I still go to classes 
all the time so I can see something. I want to see that one word, that one sentence, that one thing that takes me from 17 million to 50 million. Okay? That one word. All I need is one. Okay? All we need is one person to change the world or to invent something or find a cure. One. That's all you need is one. This is what Booker T. Washington said. Success leaves footprints. We all grab books about successful people and success and how to be successful. Well, I, I, I'll tell you something. It's no secrets. It's determination, faith, belief, courage, and will. Now, that, depending on who you're talking to, they may vary a little bit. Um, whether you're talking to this particular speaker or this particular speaker. It's a very simple formula, okay? When I'm asked today, how did you grow your company? How did you grow your company? When I took over the company, we had uh, eight full-time, part-time employees, and that included me <laughs> and, and my other family members. Do not have a plan B. Don't have a plan B. Let your plan A be it. Make it work. Okay? Because if you have a plan B, you're always saying you might fail. But what you might have to do, you might have to pivot. I'll give a prime example. Freshman year, UTA, I'm on basketball scholarship. The first day of practice, I realized I'm not going to the pros. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to the pros. So I had to pivot, and I said, okay, let me make the traveling squad and let me keep my scholarship. Successful people also look at things differently. See, I don't pay attention to what's going on around me. Okay, I don't pay attention. I see things in my mind's eye. See, that, uh, the, lot, the old saying is, I will believe it when I see it. That's not what successful people say. They see it first. They see it. Then it comes to fruition. Then they believe it. When I took over my family's company, wow. My, my sanity was questioned. Okay, why would I go from IBM, uh, this top sales job, I was the youngest person in the, in the company with this particular job and driving all, I'm flying all over America, and now I'm cleaning toilets. Quite a drop. But something told me I could make this work. Then it told me I had to make it work, okay? Wanting to and having to are two different things, okay? What I say, and I ask you to say to yourself, say this, I will, Wow. Say, I will, I, will. I, can, I can, and I must. And I must. Okay? You have to want to do this. Okay? I'm, you know, when I was at Harvard, uh, man, I'm talking to guys and walking across this illustrious campus and my head's spinning. I'm kind of a history buff, so I'm reading monuments from this guy who was in the Civil War and there's a bridge named after him and all these fantastic statues. But you know what? I'm walking across this quadrangle, you know, the Harvard campus, most of it's over here, and the business section, business school is over here across this little bridge. And I'm dragging my luggage, I'm late for a meeting as usual, and I'm, I'm going to this, this, this Harvard campus, and man, I'm, I'm on Harvard, I'm at Harvard. But you know what? What's more important than being at Harvard, that I was a UTA graduate at Harvard. That was more important to me, okay? Because I walk in a room with guys from all these fantastic schools, with all these accolades, and this UTA graduate, 1980 School of Business, is right in the room, in the mix. Okay. So what I got, what I have to tell you today is, you can, you will, and you must do this. You're the smartest generation of Americans in mankind's history. How do I know it, and you guys don't? boggles my imagination, okay? I'm so proud of you guys because you're taking this university to a place that I would never thought it would be. I didn't have this love and affinity from UTA when I graduated in the summer of 1980. You know what? I never went to an actual graduation ceremony. I went to work immediately, started traveling, and came back 20 years later and actually walked across the stage 20 years later. I love this university for what it's done for me. It has inspired me, uh, 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 forged me, and helped me be who I am today, okay? And I thank UTA every day. 
And when I walk into meetings and guys are talking about, oh, I went to Texas and they're showing me the rings and I went to SMU. I said, you know what? I went to UTA. Thank you very much. Bye, 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 thank you.